welcome to the Ladies in Biz podcast, where every week we have guests that are amazing female entrepreneurs. Find out how they got started and grew their business. Discover how their story can help you grow your business. Thanks for tuning in today. Here is your host, Penny Redmond. Welcome everyone to another edition of Ladies in Biz. And as normal, we've got an amazing guest and she's going to have tons of information for us today. So welcome Adele Spragan. Thank you. It's great to be here, Penny. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. So it's customary that I always read off a bio for all our guests because I want to set the stage so everyone understands who you are and what you're going to bring to the table for us. So here's yours. So Adele Spragan is the CEO and the author of Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment, and the creator of the Repattern for Success programs. As an inspiring thought leader in personal empowerment, Adele speaks to hundreds, I think you speak to thousands actually, of people about how to turn their personal patterns into their personal profits. By combining the latest findings in neuroscience with the ancient wisdoms of meditation, Adele shows people how to transform the subconscious patterns so they can break through their limiting blocks and step into the leadership roles in all areas of their lives. That's amazing. So how do you do that? (laughs) (laughs) Big question. How do you do that? (laughs) It's so easy, right? So well, we're going to get yeah. into that for sure, but at the very beginning, it's customary that we just sort of ask our guests, if you could just give us a little bit of a story about um, when you decided to start your business and you said, yes, this is the right time for me. So can you share us a little bit about your story? Sure. Um, so I guess the easiest way to start is I started with three successful businesses and rapidly quit three successful businesses, one after the next <laughs> after the next. <laughs> I had um, I had a very interesting pattern of people pleasing and imposter syndrome, and it would just cause me to turn tail and just run over and over again. Um, though Penny, one of the things that you may or may not know about me is I struggled with panic attacks. So to the point where I had panic attacks every day for 10 years, a period of 10 years. So it was really trapping me inside this cycle of quitting with my high level of anxiety. So by the time I'd done that for the third time, I decided that uh, something had to change. And interestingly enough, at this point, I had tried everything that I could think to do. Like most of your listeners, I'm sure, I had tried positive thinking. I had tried therapy. I had tried meditation. I had actually become a meditation facilitator. I'd been meditating for 30 years. Um, I'd also done um, uh, kundalini yoga every day for eight years. So I couldn't think of anything else to do. I was just at my wit's end. So at that point, I remember it was, it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I, that, that night, that day, I had just quit my third business. And I was tossing and turning. And I just got up and I just thought, okay, I'm just going to journal it. I'm just going to write in my journal and try and figure out what the heck's going on. And mostly I just ended up writing the word why on that page. And what happened next just totally took me by surprise. My pen started writing. My hand was writing in that journal, but I wasn't the one writing it. There was something coming through me. And now I realize I tapped into my subconscious brain, but at the time I didn't know that that was happening. But what was being written there was making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because the first words that that journal wrote was, Adele, the problem's not you quitting. The problem is you have a pattern of quitting. Change the pattern and you'll never quit again. Well, I was thinking of the pattern at the time. I'm sure as most of your listeners think of patterns, I was thinking of habitual habits or um, repetitive beliefs that we hold But my journal was actually telling me that it was something else. And how it was defining pattern was an intertwined physical sensation, emotion, and thought. When the three aspects of our being comes together, they cause particular actions. And we can get into how that happens in a bit. But basically, it just started to outline this four-step repatterning technique. And as I started to apply it, my panic attack stopped. In six weeks, I never had a panic attack since, and that was 10 years ago, eight years ago, eight to nine years ago. 
Um, and then after that, this it was like I was in an identity in which quitting was a possibility. And literally, funny, I stepped into another identity in which quitting just wasn't. It just stopped being a part of my makeup. And I went, wow, that's really interesting. And like many of my participants, I was looking for it inside myself. Like, surely it can't be gone, but it was gone. <laughs> so, uh, so at that point, I decided, okay, I need to teach this. So I gathered together a bunch of people, and I started to teach the same thing as my journal showed me. They started getting rapid results, and frankly, I haven't looked back since. It's just, it's just been remarkable. How empowering, though, to be able to find a solution for something that's so debilitating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the repatterning technique, it doesn't just work towards anxiety. I mean, it works towards anything. Like, a lot of my clients are women, and a lot of us struggle with imposter syndrome, people-pleasing, um, you know, uh, work-life balance, trying to, to handle the family, trying to handle businesses all at the same time. And honestly, I like to say there is gold in our subconscious. When we can get out of our own way, when we can put that rational side of us on one side, because frankly, it's not too rational at all, <laughs> and we just tap into this remarkable um, ability to solve problem solve inside ourselves. And that, frankly, is where I see people need to go now more than anything. Do you think it's got it worse over the years because of that? technological era that we live in today that there seems to be a lot more stresses put on females entrepreneurs or just anyone well there's there's a lot actually that's going on in the world today that my journal explains why we need techniques such as this today so um you know one of the things that happening is it, patterns are created when you're young and then we continue to use them throughout our life and at one point in history, that worked because the world was slow, right? It was a lot slower than it is today. And so you could rely on the patterns that you created in childhood to carry you through life. But as you're seeing today, the world's speeding up. There is so much information bombarding us that the patterns that we created even five years ago are no longer effective in today's world, right? And the faster it gets, the more it speeds up, the more we need to rely on current created patterns, like patterns that we create, create in this moment versus patterns that we created in the past. So hopefully that made sense to your listeners. Oh, that, that, but yeah, there is a lot going on. That makes perfect mm -hmm. sense to me because I think that the, the world has changed so much because of technology and has affected us in so many ways that we can't even think of. And, and honestly, I never thought of it that way about patterns because I certainly have appreciation for patterns, but in how we live our life, but I never saw it as, as that you, how different it is today. And I look yes. at it, no wonder, you know, a lot of us are struggling because we can't fall back on a comfort level that we had before. That's right. That's right. And you can see, you know, um, I love that quote by I think it's and Andre Andre Gide or Guide I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name but he says you know in order to discover new shores you have to lose in order to discover new land you have to lose sight of the shore and that's where we're going now we've lost sight of the shore guys <laughs> it's, it's time yeah I don't it's know where to start is. rowing <laughs> I don't know where it is uh, oh, anyway, a few, uh, I think a few podcasts ago, we had actually uh, a person that you know, Doris Chung. And oh, yeah. Of course, I know all of us are connected somewhere, right? We can definitely network through. But anyway, she was telling me about your book is going to be a second edition coming up. And I think that's, that's totally amazing. But if, would you mind sharing with us, because normally I have lots of questions for our guests, but I'd really like to focus on your book and on the four steps, because I think it would be just, you know, some of us don't get to go to events, and that's part of the reason Ladies in Biz is around is because some, you know, people that are listening here aren't in an area that they can go to events or they see speakers, and I think that, I know I've seen you speak, it's been totally remarkable. It was made me change and think about how I think of my life even. So could we just sort that out and maybe talk more about your book today? And sure. uh, 
I'm just going to let you go for it and just start where you want to start. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess the easiest place to start is to, uh, you know, I'm sure many of your listeners have heard of mindset techniques. <laughs> and I'm sure you they've heard of law of attraction, positive thinking, vision boarding. And we do all of this in order to get to a goal that we feel that we can't get to, right? And that's a very typical way of managing our life. So we set a goal and then we strive, I call it, to get to that goal. And that's fine, except everything that we've been taught, Penny, absolutely everything that we have been taught about how our mind works is now being challenged by, by neuroscience. So today's modern brain scanners or modern neuroimaging systems are challenging everything that we have come to believe in the past about how we are to get to our goals. And so this is why oftentimes all of these techniques that we try and use to get to success, even SMART goals, you know, S-M-A-R-T goals, even that is is difficult when it comes to how the brain actually works. So I should start by saying this. We are taught that we think, feel, and then act, right? You've heard that? Yeah. Think, feel, act? Okay, great. Normal. Throw yeah. it out the window. <laughs> oh, okay. It's Just not actually on. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> what, actually, <laughs> what actually happens is we feel, so we got information comes in through our senses, and that information changes our body's vibration. So our body is, is all the time in communication with the world around us, right? That feeling, that change in body vibration triggers a pattern, and we take an action. And then the mind comes in, the thoughts come in in support of the action that we just took. So we feel, act, think. Okay? Oh. And there is, get it? And we cannot change our action based on that thought. It's actually after the fact. So what we need to do is we need to change the pattern. We need to change the, the initial thing that's occurring that triggers that action that takes that thought. So I like to say it this way. You're not responsible for putting your hand in the cookie jar if you didn't choose to put your hand in the cookie jar, right? <laughs> There's no such thing as free will. Just, just Toss it right out the window now. <laughs> it's like reprogramming. It's reprogramming. Yeah. Yeah. We need to reprogram using the subconscious brain, the subconscious mind that is responsible for that pattern. So it's the impetus to act. Um, if, I, if any of your listeners are more interested in this, John Dylan Haynes, Max Planck Institute, he has some wonderful videos, podcasts on this, um, how your brain is actually working. I'll add those but, to the bottom, the notes on the bottom to link it to John Haynes. So people. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. But basically, what it comes down to is if any of your listeners are struggling with, you know, why can't I get to my goals? Why am I always thinking negative? Why is this not working? The best way to look at it is you're not responsible for that. Your patterns are responsible for your actions. But that, unfortunately or fortunately, that doesn't let you off the hook. Oh. All it means is you have to change the pattern, right? <laughs> I'm going, oh, so far so easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now it's gonna, what, what needs to happen is when we know that we're not taking an action, it's removed the pattern that won't allow us to take that action. Big difference, okay? So how do we do that? Yeah, I was say, it, sounds, it sounds like we have to remove that pattern, but how do you do that? How do you do that? So first of all, your conscious mind can't do it. The yogis have a great saying, you cannot get out of the mind using the mind. It's not possible. So it's not thought that needs to lead, okay? So the first thing that your listeners want to do is that you want to set your goal. So I want to have a successful business. I want to have so many clients. I want this, I want that. Great. Determine exactly where you want to go. Your next question, however, is what is between me and that gap? What's in the gap? What's between me and that goal, I should say? Okay? So you set the goal. So tell me a goal, Penny, anything. Oh, a goal for me right now? You're putting me on the spot? I am. <laughs> My 
goal is... Make one up if you have. Oh, no, no, I've got lots of goals. It's just which one would I pick? Okay, my goal is actually right beside me, so I can talk about that, is that I like doing a calendar blocking, and I haven't done one for December yet, and it's been there for days, and it's like, okay, when am I going to get to this? When am I going to get to this? Is that is Great, that okay. okay. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. All right. So you've got this goal to fill in your calendar with all the people who you want to be on your podcast, right? For December. Perfect. Now you want to ask yourself, okay, what, what's stopping me from filling that calendar? So what would you say? What, what, what's not stopping me? Well, I'm, cause I'm scatterbrained and I've got a hundred other things to do. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've got a hundred other things to do. I never get around to it. So that's what you want to write down. Okay. So I've got a hundred things to do. I don't get around to it. So I hope our readers have some pen and paper so they can write theirs down at the same time. Yes, exactly. Okay. Got it. Okay. So now you want to say, okay, so do you have a list of people to call? Do you know who you would be calling? Mm hmm Yes. Okay. So um, other than having a whole bunch of stuff to do, is there anything stopping you from picking up the phone? No. 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 Okay. So it's just, I just got too much to do. Perfect. Just got way right. too much. Yeah. Okay. So what we just did was we identified what I call the top of the iceberg. So how I'd like you to think about yourself is think of yourself as an iceberg above the surface of the water are all of your actions, all of your behaviors, all of your beliefs. Below the water is where those patterns lie. Got it? Okay. So what you just gave me was the top of the iceberg. You just said the behavior is I've got 100 things to do. I never pick up the phone. Great. Now we're going to go down and identify the pattern. So your next question is, okay, when I think about having all of that stuff to do and never getting around to, fin to figuring out my calendar, what is the emotion that comes over me? Oh. My emotion is I start to feel stressed and definitely start feeling stressed. Okay. So there's an anxiety that happens? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Where do you feel that physically? Here, chest. See how fast I is was it? on that? I know that one. <laughs> Great. Okay. So does the heart beat faster? Is it racing? Is it tension? Uh, what constriction. happens? In it feels constriction. Good. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so we got constriction in the chest. We have anxiety, stress. What is the thought that goes through your mind? Oh, I've got to get rid of this to feel better. Okay, I've got to, I've got to get rid of this feeling, and then I'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So what you just did was you just identified the three pieces of the pattern. There's a physical component, an emotional component, and a mental component. Notice how that thought is in support of the physical and the emotional. Notice how the, the mind is in support of what's going on in the body. Make sense? Yes. All right, great. Now, we tend to think that that is because of the situation out there. Yes, I would think so. so. Yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> so we need to reverse that logic. It's actually not because of the situation out there. It's because of a pattern in you that is creating the situation out there. Flip it, right? Okay. So you created that pattern in the past for some time. Too much to do. You probably have lots on your plate, always, everywhere. Right? Everybody right? does. Most people do, yes. Okay, but not everybody. There okay. are some people who don't, right? So okay. we can see that that is Penny's pattern, I call it. Okay. Right? It's a and that pattern is what's preventing you from filling in the calendar. Okay. Get it? My daughters would agree with you for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. All right. So now you just want to get present to that as a pattern. Okay. So what we do next is we own it. Okay, that's my pattern. That's not the situation out there. Now, can you see how that kind of calms you down a little bit? It's like, yes. oh, yeah, okay. Did you I'm in control. I breathe in deeply. I kind of, kind of, yeah. Which, oh, yes. Yeah. It's yeah. like it, it, all it is is a pattern. Okay. That doesn't mean i got to change the world out here. All i got to do is change the pattern in here, and then that world changes, right? 
Great. Okay. Now that was step one, step two. So step one is just identify. Identify what's actually going on. Most of today's teachings, today's traditional methods, are about changing what's actually going on, right? But that doesn't help us. It just makes us feel more stressed, more anxious. So the first step is just, okay, what's happening in here, right? And then the second step is own that as a pattern and not as given by the situation, given by a pattern in you. All right. Now, I want you to observe the pattern. So what I'd like you to do, Penny, if you want to close your eyes, it's the easiest way to do this. Find that stress and that constriction in the chest. Now, try not to judge it, try not to change it, try not to make it go away. What I'd like you to do is just witness it. Just totally witness that tension. And as you witness it, tell me what happens. Does the mind come in and say anything? Does anything shift? Okay, you're nodding, so what's the mind saying? My mind is saying, relax, relax. Just, it's there. That's what my mind is saying. I don't know if that's right. But it, it's just, it, it's acknowledging it's there. Okay, so just try and put that, that thought on one side. Just thank the mind for sharing. And just come back to just exploring what it is that's there. Don't try and change it in any way. Don't try and push it away. It kind of is going away just by being <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Let it dissipate. Let it just, let it just like a balloon, air coming out of a balloon, right? Just let it go. Just let it go. Okay, great. Now, come on back. I'm back. We call that a shift. Okay. So when it just dissipates like that, it's a shift. Now, some people, that shift can be quite dramatic. Some people will sit up straight. Some people will have this shudder that goes through them. Some people will start laughing. But it doesn't have to be. It can be as subtle as what you just experienced. Just that. It was peace. Okay. It was a peace. peace. Okay. Great. Okay. Now, you still don't know. I call this deconstructing a pattern, these four steps, right? So you just did step three. You still don't know if you actually deconstructed it. How you're going to tell is on the court. When you're out there, Penny, and you're filling in your calendar, <laughs> and you're picking up that phone and you're doing stuff, then you can say, okay, that's a deconstructed pattern, right? Until then, you're just going to keep applying the four steps. But what happens here, what you just did, was the most powerful thing you can do on the face of the planet. We are so used to scrambling around at the top of the iceberg trying to fix stuff. It's a lot like moving deck chairs on the Titanic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's what's under the water that's sinking the ship. Now, the most powerful thing you can do is just what I call surrender to the pattern that's running. That does not mean that you surrender to the thought because the mind is just along for the ride. But when we can get in touch with the physical experience of that and just sit with it as a pattern, owning it as a pattern, it shifts. And boom, that pattern just disappears because it's not actually working for you, right? And the subconscious no, it's knows that. You. It's working it's against you. Really. And when you're feeling that stress, that anxiety, then it's hard to focus on. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. So in the fourth step, we would be creating a new pattern. So that's the fourth step, right? So it's first, identify it. What is my physical sensation, emotion, thought? That's it. Own it. It's a pattern. It's not actually the situation. Three, observe it powerfully at a physical, emotional level. And then four, you would be creating that new pattern that will effortlessly be filling in that calendar. So I hope that helps your listeners. All of this is in the book. If anybody uh, wants to do it for themselves, all those four steps are outlined in the book. Nothing held back in that book. So you can definitely get the whole technique and exactly how to do it. So Del, do you ever feel stressed now or like when you, so this is, a, so you've taught me something that will help me break a pattern, but do you, do you still find you have to do that yourself because you know this and understand this so well, but does it get faster? Because I, I would have to go through three steps or four steps actually for the new pattern, but do you, when you learn this pattern, do you become more comfortable with it and it's a faster process for you? A bunch of stuff is going to happen. So uh, that's a twofold question. I'm going to answer it twofold. Okay. okay. So first of all, um, 
Yes, as you master it, it gets faster and faster and faster. So I can now do it in conversation. I can do it standing on the stage. I don't have to physically go through all four steps. I'm not slowing down to identify. Do I still do that every day? Yes. I, I like to think of it as playing scales on the piano. The symphony is when you're out there in the world actually playing the music, right? But you want to keep the practice up by doing the scale. So what I do is I do it just before I go to bed as I'm drifting off to sleep. I'm, I'm a snoozer. I like to hit that snooze button in the morning. So I do it in the morning when I'm snoozing. But those are my scales. After that, I'm out there just living life. Okay. But a couple of things you said. So first of all, um, when, yes, life can become very peaceful, very effortless. At that point, set your goal bigger. Don't. <laughs> I just, right? I just got that done. <laughs> I <laughs> built one pattern and you have me going for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Set that goal bigger because I'll tell you, ladies, I mean, most of, most of your audience, I'm sure, are women because of your name, right? Ladies in this. Okay, ladies, our voices are needed out there. <laughs> it, when you hit that comfort level and you go, yeah, I'm just rocking it, great. Once you've got the four-step repatterning technique, make the goal bigger, get out there, do more. Why not, right? That's my attitude. Why the heck not? We're needed in this world. Your contribution is needed. And if you've got a tool like this in your toolkit that can just have you take on bigger and bigger goals, then go for it. Just keep going for it. Well, I think did that answer your question? <laughs> it does. It does. It's wonderful. But it, I think that, you know, your message has to get across to so many more people because I think that this is such a common problem for a lot of women and especially as entrepreneurs, um, you know, we, we have a lot of barriers, a lot of challenges um, to deal with and you need, you need some skills to be able to cope with, with what your, all the stresses that you have. And this is, this is a tool that you can pull out and say, okay, I'm stressed, but I don't need to be. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. You can use this walking up to the stage, up to the, um, the stage as you're lifting up the microphone, right? You can be repatterning as you do it. You can do this, picking up the phone, calling your clients. You can do this when you get, a bad review on Facebook, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anything that would normally shut us down and go, ah, <laughs> this tool can support you and will support you. I think yeah. that the other thing is about when you get comfortable, then you're ready for your next big uh, step forward, which is really interesting because um, I know I've gone through that myself. Just doing this podcast was a big step forward. It was pretty scary because it's a big yeah. commitment. And it's, it takes me out of some of my comfort level for sure. So, yeah. and so now I won't be getting a, 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 like a tightness in my chest when I'm going to start doing, you know, having a guest. I'm going to take what you just taught me and use that to make, and then it'll give me more energy to be uh, better at what I'm doing as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like to say that life should be and, and is when we are working with patterns. It, it really is an effortless flow. That's the way we're designed as human beings. Our subconscious knows all of our answers. We just have to get out of our own way. And when we do that, it's remarkable how much we can achieve. Like, honestly, absolutely remarkable. I, I just recently deconstructed one of my patterns, Penny, because I still have patterns that I bet up against. And for me, it was all about blogging. I just did not like writing blogs, right? So rather than resisting and pushing myself forward and striving, I just decided, okay, I'm just going to remove that pattern. Five blogs in two days, like that. And not like action comes before thought, right? Like that's yes. the important thing to remember. When you're running an optimal pattern, that action is effortless. It just, yeah, I can write a blog, no problem. Boom, 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 just wrote them like that. And today I'm still writing blogs. It's easy. Once you get rid of a pattern, it's just easy. And it, it doesn't is, come back. It is easier. I know speaking of blogs, I know I did I, I did three actually on Saturday. And it was just, just came out so easy. It was so effortless. 
But other times it's like, oh my goodness, you know, it seemed like yeah. it would be a big challenge to do it. And then yeah. when you get rid of those, all of that behind you, and you get rid of it, establish a new pattern that you do enjoy, you love it, you've got, you, you certainly have a lot to share with people. And that's what I'm thinking too, is I always say, I'm sharing with people because I know it's going to help them. Mm -hmm. it, and it's also something that I would know, I would want to know myself as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is, this is, you just went, I, I didn't actually, you know, have you as a guest so you could solve my pattern. <laughs> that was not my intention, but what a bonus. <laughs> I think other podcasters are going to hear this now and they're going to ask you just so they could solve their pattern. <laughs> <laughs> now get ready. <laughs> well, one of the things that I normally do at the end, I'm just going to check her time too to make sure we're okay here. Yeah, we're getting near the end, but I don't want to end this and I want to make sure they ask questions that I know that our listeners would want to ask you as well. So I'm trying to think that through as well as trying to sort myself out of my patterns as well. But, uh, I guess the question I have here is, at the very end, I always ask our guests about if there's one single message they'd like to say, and I mean, you've obviously given us a great message already, but if there's one thing that you would like to leave us with that we can think about and it would really help us, what would that be? Um, I think the, the, the best thing that I can give any entrepreneur is, First of all, know that you are so much more and have so much more in you than what your conscious mind will tell you. The rational uh, patterns try and keep us safe. How they try and keep us safe is they keep us small. So know that the answers that you have are answers that you, experiences that you're bringing from a lifetime of experience and you're bringing that to the table. And the second thing I want every entrepreneur out there to know is your message is so needed today. It is so needed. You are so much more than just bringing a service or a product to the world. You're bringing a new voice and a new understanding, and that is so important. So don't let anything hold you back, especially not yourself. Um, find a way forward and just leap over those obstacles and keep going because you're remarkable and, hey, we can transform the world together. We can do it individually, but together we can. And every entrepreneur out there is part of that solution. Oh, for sure. And you, you can see the world is changing. And I think that even the, yeah. the uh, you know, Generation X and the millennials are coming on board right now. And they're all looking at becoming entrepreneurs, probably more so than my generation, where it was, you know, it's still a little bit of, it was still kind of new. And now it's really not new. So um, what I'm hoping that all of them will learn from all of us as well, what we've learned through our lives as well as entrepreneurs. So one other thing that I want to ask, because we were talking about your book, so I know you're going to have another second edition coming out. So that's coming out in December before Christmas gift time, right? Yes, <laughs> yes definitely in December. So let's say the first week in December, it should be out for sure. Yeah, in time for Christmas. Christmas gift giving. <laughs> so where can they buy the book then, Adele? What locations? Um, the best place right now is on my website. It will be on Amazon in December for sure. Um, but adelsfragon.com, you can find it there. Okay. And I'll put that link down below as well. And one of the other things is you're such a, an amazing speaker. And I know it's coming up to the Christmas season. So there's not very, ma very many events in December. But I know you have, I'm not sure when this will be airing, but you've got one coming up. But do you also say on your uh, uh, your website the events that you do list, the events that you're going in? Is there a section? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the next few that I'm aware of is one in April and one in May. They will be on my website. But there's always, um, there's going to be a free webinar coming up by the end of the year. And I'm always speaking somewhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, your message is important. It should be spread around, and people should hear your message. 
because I can't imagine how many people you've helped um, make their business a lot better by learning this technique and understanding the patterns, how to break them. Yes. Well. So, yes. Yeah. And that personal empowerment, it's so important. It, we can get past any obstacle out there. It, it's the stops in us that, that really shut us down. So yeah, For sure. Well, thank yeah. you so much for coming on, Ladies and Biz. I really appreciate your time, and I know our audience will be thrilled with what they've just learned today. Oh, thank you, Penny. It's been my absolute pleasure, and I hope I wish all the best to all the entrepreneurs out there. You guys are the grassroots of the world, so keep going. And the entrepreneurs, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for listening to the Ladies in Biz. Send us your comments on ladiesinbiz.com. We would like to hear from you.